Hey, this is Dr. Pat. I'm talking about supply and demand. Okay, so I got to be, uh, I got to apologize in the very beginning here because there are two ways that uh, supply and demand is looked at. One is the math way and one is the econ way. So we've got two ways of, of, of looking at this and, and unfortunately, um, these two groups have not got together and, um, to work it in the same way. So I apologize. So I'm going to first do it in the math way because, you know, I'm a math geek. And so uh, I'll do that and then we'll go into uh, the econ in, in, the, in the second part here. All right. So with the uh, supply and demand, uh, we have this relationship between price and quantity. When uh, a price of an item goes down is low, then a lot of people like it and will buy it. So the the people who want to buy it that's demand and that uh, is a relationship with price and then also um, we have the situation where we have um, if the price goes up then more people more businesses will be able to uh, 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 produce that product uh, cover their cost for producing it so then we get more product out there in, in the world so there's this interaction between the price and what people are willing to buy it and the price and what businesses are are able to produce it okay so now in the relationship here we have two graphs here one of this is the supply one's the, uh, the demand uh, the demand is the uh, graph that is decreasing here it's decreasing uh, that's because as you move it's an, a negative inverse relationship because as you move to the right increase one of the units here then this other unit will go down and so that's when you're going in uh, one positive direction the other one goes in the negative direction and that's where you're getting this negative slope here so this negative three so this tells me just looking at the formula that this is the demand uh, relationship and I, I know it says it in the words but uh, that's how I can find it as a math person it's the one with the negative slope where supply supply basically says that if the price increases more companies are willing to, to buy it so then that's a positive relationship because as we increase uh, price it will increase quantity okay so that's what we got now based upon how these formulas are made that this is the input P is the input so P is on um, P is going to be um, let me uh, raise my little arrows here there okay so P's on my horizontal axis and Q is going to be on my vertical okay and this is the main difference between math and econ econ is going to switch this relationship this position and have q here on the horizontal and p on there all right so it's a little bit different but let's just work it here now one of the key points that we're looking at is this point of intersection right here this is called the equilibrium okay equilibrium gotta make sure i spell that right okay so that's the equilibrium point and what's so special about that point in business is is that the 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 item is priced just perfectly because the number of people who are willing to buy it on that price so that would be quantity here and the demand graph here the number of people willing to buy it at this price of thirteen dollars and thirty three cents if they charge it at that or you know put the price there then uh, about 10 people are willing to buy it 10 units you know people have demand for 10 units and then the other thing is is that if if it's a price of 1333 only a certain number of businesses can actually produce the item when that for to match that price uh, they're the most efficient of the businesses so they're able to match that uh, less efficient uh, businesses will have to have a higher price that's why the quantity will go up uh, as the price goes up because less efficient uh, businesses can now produce it so that's what we got going here so what we have here is the unique situation where the uh, number of items that people want is equal to the number of items produced and so that means your shelves is rotating very very nicely there's there's nothing sticking around on the shelf for a long time going out you know spoiling there's um, there's no reason for the uh, the business to sell it at a you know at a discounted price because it's matching perfectly at 1333 price 
10 people want to buy it, 10 people go like, hey, I want this item, and then we've got 10 items being produced. It's matching up, so the shelf is being rotated. So that's the equilibrium point. Now, what happens when the price is uh, a little bit larger? Let's say the price is $15. So if all of a sudden it's like the market saying $15 is going to be the price, what will happen? Well, we've just raised the price from 1333 to 15 at 1333 remember 10 people are willing to buy it at that price because it's a good price for them but at $15 some people are going like nah I don't want to buy that now because it's now it's too expensive for me and so what's happening there and on this the, the demand curve here the straight line for demand right here is is when I've got a price of 15 looks like only five people are willing to buy it okay so I've got five people willing to buy it that's five less than where it was before so that price of 13 jumping the price from 1333 to $15 actually had a very big uh, you know half the people are willing to buy it now so we've lost half the people of our market because we've outpriced this thing all right now what's happening to our supply well if the supply if the price increases, supply is going to increase as well. So now at $15, we're, the companies are saying, hey, we can produce 15 of those. Because now I've got a company who could not produce it and make money at $13.33. But if the price is $15, that company now can say, oh, I can make some money off this. Uh, maybe I... I Maybe I produce it for at, at fourteen dollars. My cost is fourteen dollars. So then, if the if the cost is uh, if the price is fifteen, I can now make money. Whereas earlier on, the price wasn't high enough for that company. Okay. So now, if this is my supply, my supply is fifteen. My demand is five. What's happening here? This distance right here represents uh, a difference in expectations what the suppliers are are willing to put out there and the demand there are 15 units being supplied there are five units being demanded that means there's a difference here of 10 units so there are 10 units what's happening to these 10 units well they're sitting on the shelf because i've got an extra 10 units being uh produced where I only got five units being demanded so right here this vertical distance here represents the concept of surplus there are more units being produced uh, put into the shelf on the shelf um, than what's being demanded what's being bought so that means we're gonna have a 10 units extra of surplus when the price is 15 let's go the other direction what happens if we lower the price and so we lower the price somewhere around oh I don't know about uh, ten dollar or no let's go um, somewhere in around twelve dollars area if we're around twelve dollar area then what's gonna happen here is that uh, I make it about six six companies making it six units being produced remember the blue line here the increasing line is supply so I've got six units of supply but because it's at a lower price at twelve dollars I got more people whining it because it's at a good price uh, and so then what's happening is I got a higher demand and now maybe that demand is around 14 look what's happening there these numbers are not the same there's a difference between the numbers I've got 14 I've got 14 people saying hey I want to buy this product but I've only got companies making six units of it so that right there is a difference of eight units those are there's eight unit difference that's bad that's not good because I've got 14 people saying what a great price I want to buy it but only six used so this is a difference of eight units but in the opposite direction and this is called a shortage because there's not enough on the shelf okay and so I've got on the shelf six units I've got 14 people clamoring to get it and you know what happens as we've seen in so many uh, show or news reports of what happens when those uh, stores uh, have a uh, have a, a 
an item that people want that uh, more people want than they have on the shelf and it gets crazy so this is a shortage this is where a bad situation is uh, uh, in terms of uh, the consumer uh, we've got surplus 10 units this is a bad situation in terms of, of companies because you know they don't want things on their shelves and so what we're shooting for is right there at that equilibrium point when the same number of customers get um, the uh, the item they all get the item for that price and then uh it's running through the shelves and the and the shelves uh, are cleared off and then restocked again so that's uh the beginning of supply and demand